Prepare for battle. Thank you very much, Dakota. Yeah, we're here. Game number four, IEG versus Secret High Blitz. It seems like we're mixing things up. They're just all chat flaming each other. <laughs> Misery even throws out the RTZ Ember. Wow. Wow, this is definitely going to game five. That's, I believe you're playing PA. <laughs> that's a real thing. Aunt Easy, they stop with Cyphling Dagger. They're going to clip Aunt Easy back in again. We oh, he dodges, he's done. He dodged Ice Trick Ray, but Aunt Easy, he'll go down. The that's Courier as well. What are you doing here? He's actually, oh, they can't reach him. Can't reach it. The Cyphling Dagger. But what have you got, like on PPD on Fear? Nothing. They have to retreat back out again. Secret first blood. All right, so Aunt Easy just goes down like that. This I, isn't the I'm way I'm leaving, I think, losing to PA. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, as they say that, he oh. instantly dies. It's the dangerous smack talk. It could always smack you back in the face. I, I just like the, I like the fact that teams smack talk. I know a lot of people don't. I find it really entertaining, and don't. I know that nobody takes it personally. I know the fans the of both of these teams begins. are going to call everybody cocky and stuff like that, but just enjoy it. And that's the that's the beauty of it. Like, that's meant to be, like, you're meant to get passionate about your team winning or losing. It was actually a phrase that was uh, coined over in Australia. I don't know if it ever leaked out to anywhere else, but it happened when, um, when there were severe rules restrictions made on how players can interact with each other during the football. And uh, it was basically classes, bring back the biff. You want you wanted teams to fight. You wanted to actually see the emotions pouring that is out not that a, way. That's not a thing in America. It's not a thing in America? Oh, well, it, it, can, it can become a thing. Bring back the biff. That's not something we're going to use. That's instant, I'm instantly killing and vetoing that. No! Nope. It's done. It's terrible. Uh, that story was so underwhelming, Toby, that we're just going to continue to cast this game. Pretend like that didn't happen. Ow. I, I, I forgot that you're not capped. I should be easy on you. <laughs> All right, so this game, Miha is off to a pretty decent start. He's already got the first blood, obviously, so he's going to have the advantage in this Puppy. matchup. He's in trouble right now on bottom lane. Damn that damage! When you've got, when you've got chilling touch as well as having the grave shield control, and fear attacking from range, they do so much work with this with this combo. The panelists were calling this as an aggro tri lane, but even the defensive lane, obviously, like we got try versus try at the moment. EG's just trying a little bit harder. Puppy's got to be careful. They've got a lot of offensive potential, and he even gets caught by the chains. One more hit. Ah, PA on 12, actually dropping out of 11 at one point life. The problem is they're getting decayed so much. Pilot's got five decays off already. EG just don't have the life to keep this chase going. At the same time, neither does, neither does Eternal Envy. And they go in deeper. Side of Fist here in chains. Envy's out of break free. Coming in range of that tower on TZ. Really trying to force the issue. But unable to do so, but really, Secret need to stick around here. They've got a full green wave of, of farm to take. They cannot let this go. Yeah, and at the same time, they know that EG is kind of out of steam right now. They don't have a salve on either of their heroes, unfortunately, but the soul rip and just chain eating Tango should be able to do it for Eternal Envy is Chilling Touch has popped again. He's gonna get slowed up. They don't have any mana on RTZ though, but can the right clicks do it? Oh, he plays back to the green wave! Down to 22 again, it looks like top lane too, there's uh, okay, it's just a bit of a dive from Universe, he's creep skipping it out, forcing the issue on Misery, sorry, his life dropped pretty quickly. The man, this bottom lane, they're just going hammer and tongs. I love that they decided to go for the Darks here in this game, because they know that Misery is going to be playing one-on-one. -on -one. This is a matchup that he can easily abuse, already up to 17 CS, just to the 7 of Misery right now, and... This is what I thought they would do in earlier games, and they tried it in the first one, but Misery somehow kept up as the Knicks. But in this one, the Slaughter is going to struggle a lot more. He doesn't have a mana burn to fall back on, so Universe can just constantly spam out these Ion Shells and make it difficult for him to get close. Mm -hmm. Poppy got a little unlucky with his Sentry Ward on bottom lane. The Observer from EG is further over to the trees on the right. But he just went for the standard D Ward. Didn't find anything. PPD and Fear want to go again, because now, this EG lane's got even more damage, because you've got Soul Assumption available. So you can Grave Chill and Soul Assumption. At this point, he can't, because he's short by, by 15 mana. So it's just the early harassment at the start. But with Chilling Touch, Soul, Soul Assumption, and everything else, in fact, they just jump over on PBD. PBD has to retreat back out. The Sea Touch will keep him alive, but Eternal Envy just keeps going on an undying. Puts up the Soul Rip, and that takes out the PPD. 
and it looks like actually on top lane. Misery into the tree line. Universe does this iron shell, but Misery's got no life, no consumables. He's got nothing. He he's got a catapult behind him too. I think he's actually just going to go for the straight up tower push. I don't Dyer's think he can keep this catapult alive, attack. but still, this is significant damage done to the tower. And I mean, when it comes to the laning phase, this Darks here has had the best time possible. He's already Dyer's up to 27 CS. Attack. He notices that Misery is still up there. Yep. Doesn't want to fully commit to the dive in case of TPs, but he's still bowling him out really effectively. He's got surge in one second. He could potentially just run Misery down right now because there's nothing else. There goes your crush, Misery. Okay, he had to pop the mango. And <laughs> if it goes for the off. <laughs> wow. All right. The on chat lull on the PA who dove underneath the tier one tower. Now we are actually rotates up to the top lane to catch out the poor little dark seer. And that's going to finally give Misery a little bit of breathing room. Unfortunately, most of that breathing room will be done back at his fountain. I just love the fact that even in this scenario, RTZ goes for the tilt all chat. That's what you call it when you want to try to piss somebody off. Right now, the laning phase secret. They're doing a pretty good job of things right now. As Lena was able to rotate up there, doesn't discount the fact though that the Dark Seer still has as much farm as he does. Mm -hmm. But it does kind of make things okay because now the Lena actually has 2,700 net worth, and this is on the heels of both getting first blood and that really highly valued Dark Seer. On the other lanes too, Samael, I think is the last player which we haven't really touched on at all. He's going to hawk it up. Hoping for just an instant raw kill. Make the most out of this nighttime timing. The Iron Shell from the Darkseer will allow the Creek Wave to push in a little bit harder. And the boar's just being a little bit more of a nuisance too. Because so we don't even really care. Like when you got three points up in Slave, you should be able to get rid of like hawks and boars without any real trouble. So Universe just kind of... Doing his normal thing, he's gonna force Envy out as much as he possibly can. No matter what you put in this lane, you're sending a melee up to deal with the Darkseer. And that's the losing proposition is... The Darkseer is the first in net worth on his team. Fortunately for them, everybody else is kind of falling behind a little bit, with the exception of Weeha. And he's the one from Secret, you really want to have momentum. Even with the nerf to Yule Scepter, you can still be very aggressive with this Lena. Universe is trying to have a crack here. Like you said yourself, like he Dyer's wants to try and zone out PA, but using the surge might be the last thing that he does. But Highlight comes in, then it's the Soul Rim, and they just try and fight for the Dark Seal Ball. PA burning so quickly, but Universe be locked inside the destruction wall. He cannot reach the PA, and in fact, eternally he kills the cures with that stifling dagger. And that became a lot harder than it probably had to have been, but he was a fairly farmed up here. Bottom lane, Misery. He doesn't have Bash available, but Arteezy amplified up. We are Laguna Blade. Arteezy tries to dodge it with the Butter Fist. So he was just a fraction of a second too early. And that's going to mean it's two cores down for EG on top and bottom lane. And they're definitely getting the better of things right now as with that kill, Eternal Envy is going to jump up. Of that Ember Spirit who just dies and Arteezy doesn't really have anything to work with right now. He's level 5. Misery is able to take him down so quickly with that Amplify damage. We saw in the last game he's doing it again. And Galena is especially going to be effective. Going for the Yule Scepter build. She's going to be able to burn that Flame Guard quite quickly. And more importantly, with the Amplify damage on her, her right click output is actually going to be fairly significant. Watching this top lane, Envy was trying to set a bait here for Fear, who's desperately trying to get to his familiars. The only place he could really feel like he could do it is up on top lane, but the Observe Ward scouts him out. They'll drop the Tombstone, but they're not in range of stifling. So Fear's just able to run himself back underneath that tier 1 tower. Rather difficult hero to kill off. Even though his base armor is zero, he's still got that Gravekeeper's Cloak, plus the Tranquil Boost helping him out. So there's a lot of survivability on that passage. Everybody's got a game plan until they get amplified damage, though, Toby. <laughs> True. <laughs> then the armor just gets stripped away. To mention, like, it's amplified damage and it's crit combined. Like, it almost feels like as long as those, like, you get the amplifying off and you get something like a BKB over on the PA, or at least enough survivability you can stand during the fight, there's never a fight which is properly one for EG. Beastmaster's coming up. Mm -hmm. Got a ward in this area. Looked like he wanted to try to kill Weeha, but Weeha's gonna do the smart thing, just immediately TP back. He's really close to his Yule Scepter already. He's got 4,300 net worth in this game. Quite a bit ahead of everybody else. If you combine PPD's net worth with the Beastmasters, they're still behind. 
PPD also hasn't broken the four digits, which isn't terrific. Misery is also having a good time now in mid. Not getting pressured, he took over from where Weeha was. And the Beastmaster can't really do much against this. Like, you can roar over on the slaughter, but you're still burning through a thousand life with potential TP support coming in from Secret. Paladai's only got one level up in Soul Rip, but that's still enough that will get Slaughter back out to safety if he has to TP in. But they're smoked up behind the tower instead for the picks. But EG, they're all grouped up inside their own base. They smoke themselves. Radiance Universal will hang around, but he actually attack. breaks the smoke to finish his jungling. But it was PPD and Samael who ended up getting smoked up. A secret are coming to the mid. Universe just on the other side of the river. Now they see him. They understand he's there, but they've got no ability to jump, so they had to loop all the way around or glimpse back the target. It looks the like choices. It actually looks like they are either going to go the long way, all the way into the jungle, and the smoke's going to run out before that timing. They're making sure that if anybody comes for this top area to try to stop Eternal Envy from just doing damage to this tower, they'll be able to nab him and just be universes. He has no idea that this trap is set up. They're just patient. They're going to get a free kill on a pretty high level hero. They're patient and universe. Oh, Laguna Blade will ensure the kill. I don't want to get any closer, just in case anyone else from EG was there. What a trap set up by Team Secret. They smoke in case of any of that vision. And instead of trying to force it, they understand that as long as they show Envy at that top lane, somebody's going to come up there. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Your one tower is toast now. Only to get the kill on the Darcy, you're injecting Darius even more money into Secret. Attack. That Yule Scepter you're talking about over on Weeha is Radiant's now done. Top tower has fallen. You'll take out the, the top, lane, top lane of uh, Creeps too. That's uh, easy trying to find a trade off. They're just pushing the bottom. They have to right now. They've got to get something out of this, but Misery's just going to come in. One amplified damage is going to make RTZ consider his life. He's just going to back out. You need the level 6 completed on PPD as well before you want to get into this fight. There's no reason. They're going to circle out, but a lot of map control going the way of Team Secret right now. They've taken the safe lane tower. Weeha's got an unbelievable amount of farm. Nobody from Team C Team EG can really challenge that at this point. They've got no mech completed on their darks here yet. You have this Beastmaster with, uh, with Link Dagger money. In fact, that's exactly what Smell's going to be build building into. Under attack. They really must want to get aggressive then. This is a really nice pickup by him, because you need some way to counter-initiate. And more importantly, if you can lead with that Dyer's onto Galena, she's not very tanky. The Blink Dagger is about to be finished by Misery, and that's a really fairly significant pickup. It's him alone, maybe with the help of one other hero, they can knit, they can actually kill RTZ really quickly. Like Puppy's got Static Storm available. It's one of the better counters to any of the spirits in the game. PPD. Crit on the first jump in. PPD, they need one more attack. Stifling Dagger will do the work. He's on 28 life into the tree line. Samael could commit the raw for this. In fact, he is going to. And with a chilling touch damage and ice blast, Envy, he wants to TP back to base. This will not be successful. He should shatter back at the home. Yep, there it goes. Visage also being picked up at the same time by Lena. So it's a one for one trade off, but you just lost your PA for a Visage. Really well done by PPD. Getting his level 6 out of that top lane. Even gonna go for the turnaround Dyer's snipe blast with only 100 health. Attack. Sumail was right there though, and gonna make Envy think twice before he gets into any of those scenarios again. But once again, Arteezy, he's not able to get any sort of farm. It's just the product of the, the way that the lanes were set up and the fact that he hasn't had too much support with them. But he's gotta get something out of it. The yep. two birds are protecting him, so he should be okay. They're even gonna TP down fear. He's gonna rotate to the jungle, I believe. He's gonna run into ward vision, but it won't it won't really matter at this point. No one EG have so much support around. So secret. Yeah, they're just gonna pick their fights right. Tier one towers are still the bigger objective, so the observer wards would give them a little bit of extra vision. And in fact, uh, Fear in fact moves the familiars into the mid lane. So he's always trying to isolate himself from his familiars. So they're, they're ready for the fight. Samel runs in, brought just came off, put out a puppy. He gets the ulti off. There's not enough mana for a glimpse, however, so he cannot drag Samel back. If he did, Samel should be dead right now. Yeah, maybe instead of using the Thunderstrike, if he was able to get the glimpse off, that would have been a better opportunity. But they really start smartly decide to immediately smoke up. They're going to look for a kill, and then afterwards you can even go for the Roshan. It looks like Arteezy is going to be their target, but pretty far away, and I think they're just going to have to settle for Fear. 
They have no vision of him right now. We have TP's on cooldown for one more second. Does he go? I think he gets out. They brought help. So my own TP to the bottom lane. But they do find a big target. The tombstone to drop down from Highline. Die only has one with an AK, but Misery hits two with the cross for that mech already up the universe. Letting it work. Someone's more than the What a perfect back combo. That's the way to make it work. It's Weeha. He was trying to go into mail, but now he's got familiars on his tail. They have this huge stuff. There's streak. One. There's two. Weeha will drop. The Sarge will take the streak as well. Three heroes lost for Team Secret, and that turned very ugly very quickly. Without the Disruptor ultimate and nothing backing them up. Yeah, you got the initiation off with the Slardar, but at the same time, the mech from the Darkseer and that vacuum all into that Ice Blast. So well set up by EG. The scary team fight combo. They showed it on day one of MLG. They're showing it here again. Universe Dota. He's so consistent for their team. They're gonna be able to grab this tier one tower without a whole lot of fight. Team Secret, they've gotta be worried at Puppy. Oh, they fought. Puppy's in too deep. He'll throw down the ulti, which means it will lock in on Deezy. Misery trying to amplify up and crush him down. And there is that crit coming in with the Ancient Apparition helping out. That's gonna be a one still one for one trade off. Laguna Blade from Weeha did the work. They wanna look for more though. Yeah, and they catch it. The Blink Crush forward. Here is the main man out of, out of position. They back back four, but Universe, the Stifling Dagger will severely slow him down and it'll allow for another Blind Striker Ray. PA just wants to attack in and will be able to do so. Weeha, he's the man that finds the last bit of physical damage. The TPR from PBD successful. And EG. This might mean. For a second, I thought they were gonna head towards that Roche area. But I guess when you're fighting against the Ancient Apparition and your team isn't the healthiest, probably not the best idea, but still, really good turnaround from Team Secret. Arteezy was just positioned a little bit too far forward. They instantly make the jump on him. And Misery is just making this work really well right now. He had that early death, but ever since then, 0, 1, and 6 for him. A lot of good initiations. This is the strength of the Slardar. You can constantly look for the re, the, uh, re engage. Here he, at bottom, they're gonna drop the tombstone for him too. Oh, can they get close enough? Man, that saw him does a lot of damage. That's one way to get close enough. By glimpsing him back, the wall doesn't control him enough, but Envy, he just jumps in. Weeha takes so much damage from these familiars. One of them does get picked off, and Weeha just wants to get the hell out of here. She's got enough regeneration with one charges and bottles. They can stick around and try and finish off this tower. I think you back. You don't have a lot of mana on your undying, if at all. Weeha's pretty low, there's no reason to chance that. You don't want to just do what EG did and slightly overextend and suddenly lose two or three heroes. EG just smoked as well. Yeah, this is the correct decision. Just back up. Everyone's not quite healthy enough. Try to secure some Ancients for Eternal Envy. Notice that he's build too. No help with the Dominator, he wants to go in for the Mask of Madness as this Phantom Assassin. Adds a lot of confidence to hope he doesn't get nailed, but I suppose if he's going to get nailed, it's going to be by the AA ulti and then Helm with a Dom won't really help you much anyway. Arteezy's gonna walk up, but Eternal Envy, he's got a blink target. They can see him. It's the Hawk. Where's the extra help? PA is dead. That ice blast is him perfectly from PPs. Even Misery jumps balls. They want revenge. They're gonna, gonna lose Arteezy for this. They glimpse him back in again. So a one for one trade off. He will probably just re summon the familiars instead of losing that one. This is free gold. Just keeps him here as long as possible. Still, you go for this poor man smoke, you still lose your own carry. And this just kind of propels Weeha even more above everybody else. He's got 7,700 net worth. Looks like he's going to go for the Bloodstone to continue snowballing forward. Is, that is, going is, for this, the is it still worth going for the Bloodstone? Uh, I think there's a trade-off. If you go for the Aghanim Scepter, you really need to just get killed non-stop. But if you go for the Bloodstone, it's easier to farm and keep up. And if you take a look at Team EG's lineup, there's nobody that he has to quite get it for immediately. It's not like he's playing against an anti mage or anything where the pure damage is going to make the biggest difference. So I'd try and get more, more momentum than anything else. I'm, I'm assuming that's why we're looking at the Mask of Madness as well over on this PA. Just so PA, if he does jump in, he can quickly get the kill, move on, or farm rotations for Envy. I think it mainly has to do with farm rotations. Also, if they want to go for Roshan, it'll help out a lot. It's cheap damage. He's got to be careful, though. If he goes through this type of build, you can't really afford to get Ice Blast by the Ancient Apparition, because any sort of damage source after that will just kill you. Yep. He might also want to be careful about these Necroborg puppies. 
Gonna get caught out, push the wall down. Waiting a little bit long before he drags that TZ back. Puppy, he should explode right now. They can't heal him back up. And Demail locked in inside the edge of that disruption ulti. TZ wants to go for more Weehan. No defensive Yule Step for above him. He needs PA to jump in and give him that. We'll the first strike array by space. And that's easy. He's been brought down. No crit, however, Frenzy. But the Thunder Strike will do the work. The back from Universe trying to control Pylai. Die. But he doesn't have enough life for this. The Vermillion, they don't have enough damage. And there's your crit from Eternal Envy. He finds the other. And it's all up to fear. He's up on top. Flamers, his familiar burst trying to track down Puppy. They've got their stuns available. But we are rotates over this. No resummon available. They cannot afford to lose these guys. If I did it, lose one, and this is Roshan for Secret. Without the PvE Ice Blast available, they're going to take this with ease. That's a four-man wipe for Team Secret. What a time to do it, too. Doubling up on the kills of EG right now. And Eternal MV not dying there was so clutch. Puppy was able to get his ultimate off on a bunch of heroes. You can't really get into losing fights against a Slardar. He's going to chase you down every single time. This misery, Slardar, it's paid off again for the second time in a row, and EG's not out of this quite yet. Things are kind of looking pretty rough right now. Like, two fights in a row like that where they just kind of get slaughtered? Can't really afford that. He was about to try a solo kill over on Weeha. If that Ice Blast was capable of hitting. Could have given it a shot. Man, Envy. He gets the Immortal Mask advance. It's, it's a license to dive for Eternal Envy. You can crit up around 370 just sort on the, on the creeps. If these EG heroes don't really stand a chance if he's able to get a couple of those off. And rapidly approaching level 16. There's your Bloodstone 20 minutes in for Weeha. With the Yule Scepter as well as the Magic Wand. It's like we've just gone back a patch as far as the builds. Uh, this build's pretty common, or has been for quite some time, just because it's if you don't want your Lina to have to kind of purely be a ganker, so she can kind of go back to farming as well. Highlight Dive, more stuff. He's even going to get the Tombstone oh. down on the high ground. Middle lane. The glimpse is going to drag some L back into Puppy's ultimate. Beastmaster getting Laguna bladed down as well. There's just no hope for that. And when you get the Darkseer up and towards the air, we hurry has got the ton of battle. Universe tries to back him back into the Ice Blast. But the only thing that really happens is Puppy Look gets at that damage. Shot. Universal pop. And now it is. It's Arteezy chasing after his former old man, Fear, into the trees. He'll lose sight of him, however. The old man's a widely one as Misery looking to chase after Arteezy. He jumps himself over towards the Ancients of Misery. He's got the Arteezy's chase. Arteezy's going to run into him. him. There goes your crush. Amplify up as well. They'll keep the vision over on him. Puppy, he'll actually survive. He goes inside the smokes of these familiars from Fidia can't even get the counter kill onto the secret captain. 8 to 18, they continue to extend their lead right now through pure flat out aggression. Misery leading the charge every single time, but the entirety of Team Secret that's playing so well together, that glimpse was what started it all. Weeha hits every single stun, stun along the way. They're just kind of widening their lead right now as that Ice Blast isn't able to connect on anybody. And you, you talk about the Beastmaster being counter-aggression. So Mel jumped in there and then wasn't able to get the kill. It's almost like a bit of a no-no when you go up against someone like a Disruptor because you'll always, he'll always punish you. Yeah, you can't really afford to make those mistakes because Team Secret, their lineup is built on pure aggression. When you've got a hero like Slardar, you don't want to play super passively or defensively. And probably the same applies to the Disruptor, if not more. Glimpse is kind of a useless ability if you're behind at any phase of the game. You want to be able to use it to continue the pursuits, to continue to get aggressive, and that's what we're seeing right now from Team Secret. You see it from Eternal Envy's build as well. No defensive, no S and Y. He goes directly in for the Basher on the back of that Mask of Madness. He wants as much control as he can get. Misery's almost got his BKB too. This is really going to ramp things up for them. Weeha's going to go back for the Aghanim Scepter now. Good choice by him and... He's actually really tanky right now. 1600 HP to him. More importantly, his damage output is quite high, especially when he's got Misery backing him up with that Amplify damage. You can Amplify damage, you got double damage rune. Academics upgrade, 10 Bloodstone charges as well, so there's even a secondary fight for Secret, depending on the denial timing. At this point, I'm starting to... I'm going to get pretty comfortable constantly calling the double damage the Weeha rune. Okay. Similar to how... It is for uh, S4 in the haste. Uh, Envy? He is gonna die. Yes, he will. Yeah, you can see Immortals is the only thing that is lost, however. But EG, the primary thing they had to commit was the Ice Blast. That was all for EG. 
There's also keeping in mind that's the reveal of the Basher. He was able to get, like, the second hit he, he threw into fear, he was able to get the bash off. But it's gonna be in the back of the minds as well, the PG. They have to play up against even more RNG. It's not like the PA has got enough of that as it is. To hit level 16 on Weeha. Trying to repel Arteezy from farming. And help it in. Arteezy's just desperately trying to get whatever he can. He does have the drums. Try to make himself a little bit tankier, but it doesn't really seem to matter when it comes to the Amplify damage or the Static Storm. He's desperately trying to farm up that battle fury before the next engagement. Not too far away from it anymore. Double Secret know exactly where EG are moving. Not their current position, but it's this observer ward that's just on the on the front end of the Radiant Jungle. You saw all of EG move up, and also saw the fact that they had a smoke on them, which now will be popped. And EG feel the confidence. Like they just see Eternal Envy farming in the mid. What they don't understand is Secret are now gonna play Switcheroo. They smoke up themselves, they move down into the Radiant Jungle, and EG, they're camping over on the Dire side. Or <laughs> just basically switched homes. And Secret, EG's trap is being prepared. EG's they gotta be careful. They don't have a TP up on RTZ. So this could very well just be an exchange where that EG have no way to get out. That OBS is seeing Envy. And they wanna come up, Misery blinks forward. And where do they go? The Vortex drops. So Misery already realized there's a couple of them here. Fear's gonna get close, but it has no real effect. Samel, he is actually the stifling dagger find oh, RTZ, and there's your back wall from Universe. Catching out three, seven up with the Vortex awesome damage. Poppy will drop down. BBD throwing out the Ice Mask. Sorry, a little bit too late. As Weeha can't even pick off the mail. EG, they'll get rid of the Tombstone, they'll get rid of the Disruptor. With a great initiation, they don't find much more than this. But the Green Wave is already there, and they're looking for the bait. Coming after Misery, who's going to TP himself out. They do find that opening over on the Phantom Assassin and Eternal Envy in real trouble until he can blink out to Weeha. Paying around for his teammate. You'll set the defensive is still available for Weeha. Or maybe even aggressive at this point. Nope, it will be the defensive one as the buyback comes down from Puppy. They want to try and fight. EG is very, very deep on the secret side of the base and they want to punish it. And having that happen, you just drag him all the way back. Slide a fist from it from Arteezy. He's able to get the kill over on the Lena, but they just keep the control going. The crush is not going to be enough. Fear is being controlled. Puppy just hiding him out in the amplification. Keeps the vision up as well as allowing them to find the kill. Misery a second too late to catch out PPD who TPs himself back to home. So you get the kill on a Weeha. Archkeezy does walk away with one. He's got the Battle Fury completed too. Decent maneuvers by Team EG. What I really like most about that is how they set it up. They use the birds to scout and most most importantly everybody from Secret said, okay attack the birds, attack the birds. Then they got led into that three-man vacuum. Got to be more careful than that as Team Secret. You gotta realize that fear isn't leaving those out just for you to kill. It's cheese to the trap. Man, Secret got their fill. Yeah, you lose Weeha. You have to buy it back on your on puppy. Radiant's but the respawn was, is also just so quick. Like you down a seven Bloodstone charge on Alina. That's still bloody good. Point booster as well, keeping you now about two thousand gold away from having that Ags upgrade. You get the point boost now coming in for a PPD. The Ice Basket caused severe problems for Team Secret. You've almost got the Aghanim Scepter now completed on Fear as well. Despite how everything looks for the past, the previous 10 minutes, EG walk away with that previous fight, kind of okay. And the lead is only at 5,000 gold right now, so even though the score says 21 to 10, the actual lead is okay right now. Ember Spirit has been able to keep up. This Visage is actually pretty far. First thing is matchable. EG Shard. Maybe not fighting up the tier 3 towers, but they fight on more even terms. I suppose you can't really have much more even terms than having that high ground advantage. Sitting the trap and Secret walking directly into it. So maybe Secret then just make their own field of battle. This time will be the tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Their high ground isn't fantastic. Because you've got a hero like PA who you don't want to frontline in a game like this. Misery isn't a tower hitter either. Weeha does okay at it, but you want an Aegis on him, presumably, before you go for any sort of major push. So they're just going to take down all these tier 2 towers because it's so easy to grab for them when they're this far ahead. And wait for the next Roshan, and then you can start thinking about things like the high ground if you need to. They're still getting split push uh, uh, like, uh, quite a bit. 
You had a couple of players from EG pushing down the mid. You had uh, Arteezy farming up the top lane. Roshan is now another minute away, and Secret might have that bottom lane pushing into the tier 3 tower. But EG is setting up for the mid. The top lane's already got a decent momentum for EG's away. I'm looking for a little bit more. Dyer's Got the triple birds and that vacuum wall combination at the darks here, and that's something that Secret have to pay attention to. You have to be so careful when you're playing against that. There's so much chaos that can be created, and if Arteezy just lands one slide of fist in the middle of all of this, it'll just be a full team wipe. Dyer's middle Give it a shot. Familiar birds. This tower doesn't really stand a chance, and Secret don't have anything to initiate on. Like, you fortify because there's rats hitting your tower. Your tombstone as well, but the familiars are also quite good at getting rid of that tombstone. Dyer's middle tower. And then they'll just snipe the tower, and EG's happy to back up from here. They got what they came for. They currently have a one tower advantage. It's insane that even in this position, that they're able to play that aggressively and just take the tower in front of Team Secret. But Team Secret, you don't want to really risk the game on the hopes of that tier two. Going for something like the Roshan is a lot safer. Especially when you've got a Slardar, but EG, they've got the Hawk vision advantage going through. A lot of different ways to set this up, and they know that Team Secret are all at top. Really just gonna chance this on their own. They don't have a medallion. They had the level 3 Necro books up and running, and with Familiars, they got enough control as well. Even if it's just forcing Secret into a fight, like the implications over on Arteezy, he actually walks into the pit to reveal out the status of Roshan. Maybe not the greatest thing in the world, but Misery being very, very open to coming in. These Necro books have already been triggered. Roshan's on dead yet. Misery with his BKB. He jumps in, but they jump back out again. The Poppy Ulti is down the fear. He's in real trouble. The pack will come back out. The wall's not really doing enough at the moment. The Star just drops the temple and he's praying for a crit. Finally gets one over from TPD, who wants to keep running himself away. Still can't find another one. Let him strike up, not gonna happen. Not with the triple stuns coming down from Fears Familiars. It's still a two for one trade off. Roshan battling up against undead minions, but this wall is divided the river. Misery wants to try and loop around it. He's got a potential blink to double crush. He sees Samael as well as BPD. Jumps in. He actually gets the extra bash as well. Misery for the double kill. Samael needs to blink up. An extra ball to slow down this Lada. Universe right behind the Iron Shell Burn, who was just in range. Lada will be awarded the kill, however. Might even get Puppy here as he's pretty isolated out, but the Going real target right now is with the Roach. Everyone's starting to buy back as Weeha's gonna walk in. They've got vision of this. The bash even hits on a Samael. There's no look at a blade though. He's still eight seconds away, but the physical damage is enough. The Yule Scepter taking our DZ out. That means no flame guard, but Universe back in again to go in for that back, big Zack. But Misery too quick on the mark. They're gonna glimpse back Universe as well. Secret. Their buybacks, they're now instantly worth it, getting the kill on two more cores. Not to mention Roshan. These birds from fear are causing real issues around Roshan. And that's why they're moving out. They want to get rid of a couple of them at least. There's one, but they can't get the couple. A couple of two. The Ice Blast is going to fall in. Hit Weeha. This is going to make them kind of reconsider for half a second, uh, but... Yeah, you'll set them. <laughs> just get the birds and you're perfectly okay. Everyone's filtered in now. Arteezy had to use a buyback for that fight. Still was unsuccessful. They weren't able to hold the Roche. Now it's going to be Secret that take it for themselves, moving themselves one step closer. Being able to win. And Weeha getting lucky too, he picked up a full regenerant. Straight back up to full life. They get to see Secret, even though they did expend, they expend money, they really just get the biggest advantage. 13,000 in the experience advantage, still got 7k for the gold as well. Critical items are all there. The Aghanim Scepter is now done for the Lena. Disrupt is at least causing some problems with that Glimmer Cape of his. And having the Blink BKB inside it with another 2.3k, you start giving even more life to Misery. It just took EG a little bit too long to do that Roshan. And then when it came to the actual fight, Arteezy, even with the buyback, they're not able to do as much because you've got the dire side advantage on Team Secret. Yeah, when they go for the buyback, they're there so much faster. I'm kind of surprised EG went for it. I was expecting him to use Roshan as bait more than anything else. I think that was the initial plan, and being able to fight around that area with Triple Birds, Vacuum Wall, is a pretty decent setup, but they got split up early and often. Well, I found Familiars. They don't have the drop available, hence they're having to take this damage. Well, they can't catch up to the other two. But this really is like what Fear is almost forced to do. Just keep that split push going, keep secret. 
splitting their team up, try and deal with the, with the pressure they apply, but when you have moments like this, Universe out a little bit too far, he's fined up his threes before death. But Weehar and Poppy, very efficient. Poppy just came in to say hello at the end. Well, it was all Weehar's work, really. He's also there to make sure in case Universe gets a little bit of distance between him and Weeha. He's got the glimpse, but it doesn't even matter as Weeha's damage is pretty insane right now with the Aghanims. 13 Bloodstone charges to his name. Got an Aegis on Eternal Envy. I'd imagine they want to start going for the push, especially with the 9 second BKB still on him. And I think a similar number on their Slardar, yes. This is where you want to start getting really aggressive if your team's secret. Blink Dagger from Weeha will help you to do that. That was blink initiation. No wonder, no wonder, no longer worrying about that short range Yule Scepter. I'm still wondering when Samael is meant to have a have a real effect. Because he triggered his Necro unit so early on in that fight, it never really felt like he was able to achieve anything. Like you bore and you hawk up, but secret of seeing him coming. Yeah, there was no way that you were gonna do it without them. So he pops them really early, but even then, the damage was kind of lackluster. Secret are gathered around this area. They've got an Invis rune on Misery too. They might smoke up and just immediately run into him. Misery should just blink away. Oh, that wasn't a dream. Misery does blink out. The Observed Lord was only just deep water. That was EG's vision in the back. Three man wall with the Ice Blast. Well on target for Mount. We'll be able to get the roar over on Misery, but Eternal Envy on the back lines. Getting Eternal Envy and keeping Cartesi out of the fight. The Veil gets ridden up through. That's not the way to live through this. He's so low on life, and he will go down the Strumpet Thunder Strike. They try and bring him back. Misery caught out from the west side. Weeha, he wants more. Laguna Blade is still available for him. It's a one for one trade off. They grew Spear back a little bit further. PA, there goes your Laguna Blade with the slave. Blinking forward, Weeha, he's going to finish the job. But Pyamai dies in a lot of trouble. You burn your Aegis Immortal on Eternal Envy. And now it's just up to Weeha and Eternal Envy. The Necro units right behind him. Arteezy, Slide of Steering Chain Control is there. Familiars drops are available. There's one, they drop there's down. Two. One, two. The third one, now it comes down just in the nick of time. And they will kill off. Eternal Envy and Evil Geniuses having a favorable fight. Uh, what looked to be a bit of a disastrous start. Absolutely massive by them to be able to hold that. They were able to split that fight so beautifully. They isolate the Slardar, the bane of their existence in that fight. Universe has a really good initiation and it takes them just a little bit too long to kill Sumail. Fantastic fight by them. I don't quite know how EG does it, but Goldgraph is starting to tick up a little bit. Things are looking really bright right now. It's 3,200 gold on RTZ. You've still got a lot of different ways to win this game if you're EG. You can rely on either the Ice Blast hitting, if Arteezy gets a good slide of fists off, if you got a good vacuum wall. There's tons of ways to be able to do this. <laughs> I love it with the Ice Blast hitting too. He gets tagged by it as he, as he leaves the base. He thought his regeneration would be enough. But he a good micro too by Fear, by the way, at that last second. Oh yeah. Being able to lock down that Phantom Assassin for so long. He had to wait for that third familiar. It still had the stun on cooldown, I believe. They used one of them before. It's EG now, getting on the aggressive. You can at least take out the tier 2 tower. If you win one fight, it looks like... For both sides, they've got high ground potential. All you gotta do is just win one fight. Old Graph is at about 5k. A lot better than what it was before. Could have been a 10k advantage for Team Secret at one point, but... EG managed to hold. They're gonna smoke up, but they don't have... What's your objective with yeah, this they don't, they don't have the Aegis this time around. I think they're just going to try to get some control. They've got Ward Vision in the jungle. They're going to see all of EG here. This is pretty perfect for them. EG don't back up soon enough, but they're already on the retreat. They understand. Everybody's off the map. He was actually staying close enough. He could have could break the smoke. We're still here in, in nighttime and Weeha jumps forward. They're too late in the stuns. And the Spirit was out there for Arteezy. Haste! That smoke's gonna fail. Secret are just gonna kind of circle out. They have to back up. These familiars are pushing at the top lane too far. Yeah, they gotta make sure that the split push doesn't happen. And without the smoke available, you don't really want to play that game. Wait oh. things out. Wait for the next Roshan if you're Team Secret. But EG, they're pretty comfortable playing this position. You got not a whole lot of ways for Team Secret to go for the high ground. And the smokes are gonna be on cooldown for quite some time from Team Secret. They just have to wait before they can go again. Either that or you just wait for Roshan to be back up again. And use that as bait. We need vision around the pip. 
Right now they've got a very defensive observer ward watching around the bottom tier 2 tower area. Arteezy's got the crit on him too. And if he wanted to, he could almost finish that Daedalus up, but... I'd imagine you just wait for the buyback in case things go disastrously. Because like, how risky would that be? To sacrifice your buyback, like... A little bit of extra damage? As long as Arteezy has buyback, I don't think it's gonna be feasible for Team Secret to go for the high ground. We have forward, but too late to go for the stun. Even then, can we do that initiation? Like, you blink and you'll set for him up to go for the high strike array. But the, the Ember Spirit should be able to get out. Yeah, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is slide a fist as you come down, but there's some counters where the Lena can actually just go for the stun half a second later. But then that means that Arteezy just goes for something else and hold that dot as you mail. That's a little bit easier. Poppy throws down the ulti, but Universe oh, is a full what a setup. Wall, and with the blast, it's gonna hit really hard. Follow up though, it's not there. Misery got the BKB off of four hands, so they don't really have a lot of damage. The follow up might just come from Eternal Envy. He's chasing after Universe, but Universe instantly pops the Greaves, dispels the slow, and Misery, he walks straight past him. He didn't get the crush in time. A small little branch covering what was the secret of Universe. They were so close to that too. The zombies were leading in right there. Misery reacts half a second too late, but it doesn't really matter. They get a pick off on a pretty significant core. Roshan is going to come up fairly soon. It does. That's going to be Team Secret's moment to go, but I don't really want to push before that point. These familiars. Garrison from Poppy will protect him. As well as that Glimmer Cape. The Ice Blast, however, I don't know if that'll protect you. 415, what level are we looking at? That's a level 2 ulti. He should be okay. Birds are still going to go for the split push. 400 damage on that tower. TZ gets a lot of farm during that time as well. Missile Blade is completed on Eternal Envy though, so that's another factor of control that they've got working for them. And the data list is complete by your TZ. We have another Ags arriving. In the hands of the Undying. 40 gold away from the complete one. Should be able to wait for it in this base. 10 strength, that's gonna mean a lot to heroes like this Ember Spirit who already doesn't have a lot to work with and his armor's not gonna be the best, especially when he's got the slaughter on top of him. It's gonna be a level 3 amplified damage, 20 armor. Is that is that when it's worthwhile for the Ember Spirit to move into something more like the Scardi to get a little bit more stats? I think so. Even gonna go for something like the BKB or the Blink would probably be really effective. If they're gonna go for Arteezy at top. Gonna go for the Abyssal and he gets it! And the defensive spirit. Even with the Abyssal, they need more control over an Arteezy. And not the Misery kill. was closer actually, but... We weren't able to get it. When you actually think of it, like, how much lockdown do you have without the Disruptor? Kind of impossible. And if you do get that BKB up, then Disruptor needs to get Nag and Imceptor in order to keep that control on, on, on Arteezy. I mean, they really just need combination of two heroes to be able to kill Arteezy. If you've got the Lina plus pretty much either the PA or the Slardar, you can probably kill him. And the Disruptor plus any of those soup cores would do the same. Really, that was just a little bit of uh, coordination error. I think it just came down to the fact that Eternal Envy didn't have a lot of time, so you just had to throw out the Abyssal. Yeah, Otherwise, Arteezy just gets out. Better to chance it than anything. It's Roshan time again. The big man's up, and up, well they should jump forward, the male getting caught, he wants to go for the raw, the ice blast will be able to connect, but doesn't do any of the burst damage, over onto the PA, meanwhile on the pack lines, it's Arteezy being harassed down by Weeha, who will be able to kick pick off Universe, Misery is going to assure it with a crush, but PVD will drop as well, this is a 3 for nothing trade off, and fear is granted, there's no way home, 4 heroes lost, they do pick up Eternal Envy. But at the same time, this at the same time, Roshan spawns up, so you're gonna lose the next Aegis the Immortal as well. Or for one trade, Belina's going for more. He doesn't have. He jumps the defensive spirit. Oh, that would have been. Okay. That would have been. Amazing. And now Arteezy goes the other way. <laughs> he, he blinked himself forward to the defensive spirit because the observer ward scouted it out, so he was hoping that Arteezy would just tap it. I don't even know if he gets a kill without his ultimate, anyways, but. That was a really good attempt, and most importantly, you just want to make sure that the Amber has no chance to contest the Roshan. And it's going to go on to Weeha, I'd imagine, but they're just going to circle out, actually. It's a lot of time to spare. Why, they don't Looks like they're this. just going to back. 
There, there's no there's no split push going on. You got a lot of players dead. The ice blast will come in, but you're very very healthy on all your heroes. I think they're just gonna heal and go for it again soon. But I think they could have completed it in that time. Like Roshan was about half, but everyone just backs off at once. Very unusual. Add that to the list of questions for why Secret didn't want to finish up Roshan. Meanwhile, our, our TZ is having himself a great time, up to 2.9k. Yeah, he didn't really get his team alive during that last fight, but he's still becoming a, a bit more of a powerhouse. If he can get one damage item and they aren't able to get picked off, then be okay, but Team Secret, they're gonna, they're gonna wrap around. They're wrapping around underneath the Hawk vision, though. If the night timer's just started, Misery will get rid of that Hawk. So Secret at least removed the vision, but Beastmaster is also here. Walking around with his invis rune. There is the gem over on Misery, so you've got to keep tabs on that. But yeah, there's no reason for EG to fight this. Like they're moving up towards the mid lane. The familiars are coming up as well. And in fact, Secret are gonna jump in. So what they could have done before, they're now going to do. They're after Roshan. They did that so quickly. There's still some cheese on the ground too. And Misery's gonna grab that. JP scroll drop. Yeah, she drops the gem for it. Oh, right, somebody should definitely go back for that. Yeah, yeah. Pa Pilot Eye is gonna grab it. <laughs> he should be tanky enough during the fight to survive. I guess it really doesn't matter. They were able to do it half a second later, and Sumail actually might just get picked off. He has got the Shadow Blade, and yes, how quickly he goes down. How do you get that initiation when when they can see you blinking in and you can't rely on you yourself to initiate Shadow Blade? And now they can go for more. It's easy. It's a long way up here. They start with the Yule Step stuff. The puppy drops the ult, and there's no way for Artis to jump out of here. Two very quick kills. Great setups from Secret. Their movement across the map throughout this entire series has been really awesome. They set that one up so well. For a second, I was thinking to myself, how does Alina set up? Artis just blinks back using the Flight of Fist, and then Remnants away, but Puppy was right there. Definitely didn't see that one coming in. This might actually just mean high ground right now, or at least force the buyback out on Arteezy. But without the Beastmaster available either, this is going to be a pretty rough hold. We've got the Ice Blast and the Vacuum Wall. Oh, they get the jump. It's over on Fear. Woody can't line strike the ring. Laguna Blade as well. Misery to fall up. But the back of the wall is up here from the Dark Sea. Misery to get so much damage. Weeha! He's dead already. The Ice Blast will fly in, but it's still that PA on the front line. Everyone's sure the kill over on over on Visage, but Arteezy wants more. The familiars are moving forward, and the BTs, they're being used on the familiars. And say hello to Samael, the glimpse, you're going to send him all the way back into the dire jungle at this point. As PA battling up against himself. The illusions from the Dark Sea Wall. Universe has that blink dagger. He's jumping forward into the ultimate of Puppy. But then with the cross, the side of fist and damage, Universe will go down. Eternal Envy saw the opening and just went for it. The familiar control wasn't enough for him to work with. And now, with the buyer from the double BTs, it's the big, it's the blink forward from Weeha. And what to get forward is the PPD. And this is real trouble for EG. They don't have buyback on Universe or on Fear. It's gonna be a very tough defense for them. Not the darks here. This is going to get infinitely harder because that was what was able to hold that last fight. Him getting that really nice back here. All off. You don't have PPD either. And he's got that Aghanim Scepter. Buyout on him, but... You might just have to give up this first set of racks without your Darkseer available. They can at least drive the Kareet Wave down and get rid of it. So, Envy with the familiar stuns. It's not the easiest talent you've ever seen. And there's your buyback from the Ancient Apparition. Look for that Ice Blast to come in. That's the reason why Envy has to jump out through a different avenue. Using that blink, but Weeha is still going to work. The fresh millions are up, they'll get rid of the tombstone. The tower is still alive for the moment, they get a glimpse of fear. Back a little bit further, and there's Misery. Forward on the crush, protecting Eternal Envy. He's still got the Aegis, the Immortal has been burned off the entire time. Arteezy can't stop himself now. This one, the Searing Chain's looking for the control. With the control, the stronger from Puffy. With that static storm gone, four heroes down for evil geniuses. There's a bat become five. They're all dead right now. The Dark Seer might respawn back to life again. They're trying to pick up these familiars. You still have to achieve the objective. They have to bring down the tier three tower, but the back wall! 
He jumps in for it. He burns the Aegis Beam wall off. Highlight die. The TV out barely in the nick of time. He took so much damage from TA. There's your BT that's coming back. It is going to be Weeha. Back to the front line. We be stuck. He goes to the we can't protect him anymore. That's going to be fun. And now he's going to go down. No, he won't. The grief. No, oh, will be. The PA jumps forward. They'll find the damage. There's no, no buyback buy on our TV. There's no one alive for EG. Even if he must not come up in 13 seconds, he's not enough to stop this push. Him alone, he's not going to be able to do it. They might just give up this Rax and say, okay, we'll fight for the last tier 2 at top. This is huge damage done to the base right now, and a lot of gold on the side of Eternal Envy. He's got 6,300. He's jumping in. He went for the blink wall with the Necro book down as well. Laguna Blade, and you're back again for Universe. The damage, he can't even kill a puppy. He got glimpsed back. The Ice Blast on the way, and Puppy just on the edge of it. Doesn't get connected. Chill is over on the leader, but that won't be enough. Universe jumps forward. He needs some extra control. The Abyssal Blade, however, is no, well, there's no mana for it. There was just the one hit bash that came out that did the work, but Universe wants to keep going. Blink in one second time. Weeha buys the space with the Yule Scepter. And where do you go, Universe? He surges back home. He will not take the risk and chase any further, but they keep their bottom racks alive. And you've still got chances for these Ice Blasts. It's off cooldown in five seconds time for Ancient Apparition. And that was the best possible scenario that you were going to get out of that. Just losing one set of racks when you had five heroes down and no buyback in RTZ. On PPD. He's in real trouble. Try to actually juke it out with his tree line, but he wasn't ready for the Shadow Blade of Weeha to see him. The Ice Blast might connect, and now Universe actually jumping forward. Got the vacuum wall. They can difficult for them to escape, but the Thunder's just too good. Arteezy moves the front line, got the burn over on Puppy, turns on that shield as Puppy, the ghost after beating Arteezy, cannot attack him, but there's your back wall. Catching out Misery. They need to get more from this. The BTs are coming in again. The Sun's on Highlight Die. It's the male who BT forward, but we are. Arteezy's one here. Arteezy will dodge him with a side of fist as well. He'll survive the ball charge up, and they'll go for more as well. Misery needs to crush up Universe, but now it's the male of the front lines. He doesn't have his roar available. And also with PA behind him, they're not sure about this, but they just use the Dark Sea Illusions to move forward. Universe, one second, he can blink forward, slowing down PA, but PA blinks up to Mizra, he'll force off him in, as Seeker desperately scramble to get home. Can't afford to lose any more because the Lina doesn't have buyback available, and all of a sudden EG turn it, and they're in a much better position than they were two minutes ago, as they've lost one set of racks, yes, but you got a lot out of that engagement. He's working on that second crit. He's just going to buy it out, I think, for the next time around. Somehow, some way, they're managing to hold on. You've got the Assault Curse comp completed on EG Fear 2. It still cost them so heavily. But they bought back on three of their heroes. <laughs> and then again, Team Secret, they bought back on Puppy as well as Weeha. And Weeha slowed down everything else. Like he wanted to upgrade his double BTs. But how great is this as well for both EG as well as Secret? Because you can utilize these buybacks where if you do have a buyback on Beastmaster, he just BTs forward towards Hawks or Familiars. And then you use the then you use Weeha, he can just BT onto any hero that's in trouble. Misery wants to jump in, Weeha will piggyback. MKB completed fully on that Phantom Assassin. We were talking about how much gold she had after that mid racks push, but a lot of gold coming his way. He's got 3,300 on top of that. Weeha doesn't have buyback for another three minutes, so you don't want to get too over aggressive before this point. And maybe even waiting for Roshan as the play. Doesn't quite matter who you give it to at this point, but working with lives is what you want. And they're securing the area around this to make sure. EG, they can't really afford to take a fight outside their base. I feel like if they lose that one. Um, game could potentially just be over at that point. You won't have the buyback available on a lot of your heroes. They really need to just get one fight win so they can try and level up the Raxes. If Secret win it, then they can just push through for a second lane of Rax, potentially just the GG. I mean, how many times can Universe get ridiculous wall vacuums off again many and again? Times. The funny thing is, he hates playing the hero. He, he finds it more. I almost died a little inside when he admitted that. He prefers right. other heroes, more aggression. EG, just kind of poking and prodding, trying to get as much farm as they can before the next huge engagement. The Roshan is available now to Team Secret. Just scouting around as much as they can for wards, but... All they, all they need to do is just pop him. Turn will envy a couple of seconds. And that Roshan will be dead, but... 
Beastmaster Hawk is making his way over. The Dire Side don't see this coming, however. So, EG are now aware of Rosham, and for the next 28 seconds, at least know if Secret are going for it. And then PBD sends the Ice Blast up to the top. He's making it difficult for Team Secret to leave this top lane alone. And the Familiars just pushing out the bottom lane. There's no risk as well when you push the Familiars out these side lanes. But just keep them at bay. EG have almost cut the lead in half. 20k at one point. Going up to 10k right now, and what a scary team they are. 20k behind, and we're still not counting them out. Only EG. It was 30k net worth as well. Okay, they're gonna start Roshan. This time, the ISI have no information about this whatsoever. They move back inside their own base, so there's smoke over on the courier. Could come out, but Roshan down by one third, now one half of his life. Finally, on TZ getting a couple of these crits in. Obviously, he's no PA, but. He's still working through Roshan, and here comes Secret. They want to use Artura as bait. These Necro units, they're halfway through the duration. Familiars will come and help them out. They can give the stuns to They're actually going to get this. They've almost got this. The Aegis is so close. He's going to the hands of Artiz. There's still cheese on the deck. And in comes the PA, blinking forward. A misery. They get the crack. The Aegis instantly triggered off. Well, actually, Weeha. He jumps up into the middle of the universe. Weeha's down for the count here. He'll end up shattering. How's the battle going? Nope. No, Artiz is already dead. Big from back over. And misery. They can just go for more. You might have taken Roshan. And you deny the Aegis to Team Secret, but Team Secret are wanting more. They find PPD. Two hits can't get a bash. He had crush. Probably thought he was going to get one of those at least, but Secret, they're heading down to this bottom area. They know that with RTZ down, you want to at least force the buyback on him if at all possible. Well, there's the first one. Ichi can still do this though. If yep. they can somehow set up the fight. Well, Universe has still the back wall. EG never properly initiated in then. Like, we hard jumped in to EG. Still doesn't quite solve the problem of how fragile this Ember Spirit is right now. You saw him just go down in about three hits. I think he realizes what he is. Like, he's a glass cannon. Down Misery. Okay. You gotta be when you're behind as much as you are. When you're down 20k, you don't have the luxury of building defensive items. I'm wondering too then, what, like, does he just finish up the Daedalus? Like, is it worth it? As opposed to getting something else. Like, I don't know if he wants to get a Monkey King bar of his own. Or do I dare say the word rapier? I don't quite think we're in that territory yet. I feel like at that point, if you just buy it and you don't have buyback, then you just lose the game. But I'm going to go for it right now at bottom. Can it come secret? Yep. You don't want to use the buyback on Ember if you can help it. Oh, they got 8 seconds, there's Fortification and Dark Jesus is in the Ice Blast. It's really nicely, but they need more damage to kick in towards that PDA. Who's still in the front line, Solar Function, and there it is. They have to blink him away. The Lotus Orb protection is available, and then BT's forward. That's going to be the Beastmaster, it's the male. They do get a good ulti up from Puppy, and a lot of damage. He's too far forward. 99 seconds on the sideline. Weeha cannot be controlled. That Yul Sept was up. Radiant EG, they blew everything. They blew all the big ultimates. After that, too, they don't have the buyback available on RTZ. Before that fight, they did, but this might just cost them the game right now. They're going to have to hold 4v5. They've got the heroes to do it. You don't have the wall anymore. And I think that's what Secret are waiting for. Look at PA. Envy just goes around the side. He's in. He can smell this land final. The victory, he hasn't got one in a very long time. But then you're back in with the Ice Blast. Misery is going to be very you're low. Just Probably take out from this one. But where is your extra damage? EDG, they're actually pushing Secret back out. Even though it is a three on five, Secret will re-engage in. There's still no buyback to Babel and PA so far on the front line. Triggers the BKB. Gets the bash over the dark here with the Laguna Blade. In instantly, you have to buy back with him, but the Ancient Apparition's down as well. It is two on five now. They're losing their bottom rank here, EG. The only thing that will stop this from being a triple rank thing is just the fact that tier two towers will survive on top. But Secret, they're going for the GG push. They're going for these tier four towers. I think they realized that if the Ember Spirit had buyback, he would have done it by now, but. 
with only two heroes alive, EG. This is a pretty impossible defense. They're gonna go for it anyways. Jump back, two men on the wall. The drop for Aldi is looking pretty damn good. She took a 14 seconds until Hazidi's back alive. Misery's kept out. We are low on life, but they're still beating into the fortress. The familiars trying to buy this space. They don't have stuns. They're just gonna go down. Misery with a double crush. The fortress still being ripped apart. Misery back to front lines. They're just four stuffing him over the top. Now envious. Oh, oh god, it's all done. 58 minutes down. That is gonna be the fortress exploding, and Team Secret will be your champions of MLG. Live here in New Orleans, it's the finals of the world. And Team Secret, under their new roster, will claim their first LAN title. A much needed one for Eternal Envy as well. Back to where it all started for him at an MLG. No words to say, they got second at ESL, they tasted silver, but this time around they're going to walk away with the gold. Well, they do, and now give him a lot of confidence coming in.